so much. That's right. That's right. She didn't play.
I don't ever remember going to bed hungry. We always wore washed, starched, and ironed clothes. We did the washing, I didn't start to, but my mother made sure that we were always clean. And we were usually a very happy household. My mother knew how to make us happy. My mom set the bar very, very high. We didn't talk back. We didn't roll our eyes. And we didn't pop our necks. Because we knew better. For a long, long, long time, I thought that my mom had eyes in the back of her head. <laughs> when I went away to Bishop College in Dallas, Texas, I was looking around and looking back because I thought that my mom could see me. But I know now that what she instilled in us kept us from hurt, harm, and danger and from doing wrong. All the way over in Dallas, Texas, I thought she knew what I was doing. Now she didn't raise us to fear her, but she did raise us to respect her. My sister Doris, and I keep mentioning Doris because we're so close, Doris and I are 11 months apart. Doris said that my mom worked us like Hebrew slaves. <laughs> we would be in the yard working and the other kids would be walking by, running by on their biceps, and we would be in the yard working. But praise be to God, we all have strong work ethics now. She kept us busy with chores and chores and chores. I mean, how many leaves could you rake? <laughs> how many nails could you pull out of boards? How many buttons and zippers could you sew? And this included my brother. My mom didn't discriminate. <laughs> Our homework was always done and checked by my mom. My mother was always at the schools that we attended from Pine Valley Elementary in Rodessa, Louisiana to Herndon High School in Belcher, Louisiana, as well as North Cattle High School in Vivian. She even got to attend some of the colleges and universities that we attended. To sit at my mother's feet and get a lesson in humbleness, family background and history was one of my favorite times. I especially loved her lessons, lessons in family background. My mom would always tell us who we were related to, and she had this saying, my mom was from Texas. And she would always tell us six girls, you can't date any of those boys over in Texas because they all came to y'all. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> and because my mom expressed a lot of history and family background, when I went to college, I have a degree in elementary education, teaching school, just retired with 35 years plus. <laughs> um, but my minor is in history. I really love history of my mom. My mother always taught us to love one another. Now, being a household full of children, we would order a fuss and fight, but my mom had a way of breaking us. My mother would make us hug and kiss one another. <laughs> that was so gross. <laughs> but you know what? I don't have a problem today hugging and kissing my siblings and saying to them, of you. I'm so honored and humbled to give to you all this brief tribute on behalf of my mother. Thank you all for your calls. Thank you for your text messages. Thank you for your comforting words. And thank you for your presence here today. But most of all, thank you for your prayers. Please keep them coming. As I have stood before you today, my help came, my strength came, and mercy came from the Lord. So I hope and pray that I have honored my mother with these few words today. To my siblings, all of my family and friends, hold your heads up. Keep loving one another, because we all we got. So I hope that in the words of my mother that I have straightened up and I've blown right. Thank you. Savior. 
I was always very proud to know that I am a lot like my grandmother. My very first memory is when I was getting out of a car, and I had to have been probably three or four, I believe we were just coming back from Africa, and I was following my mother, we were going through this rustic gate, uh, the home, and I obviously had come to know that that was 1415 Osage Drive in Vivian, Louisiana. Follow my mother through the porch type patio, and yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, it's a maze getting, getting there. But, well, so following my mom through the doorway, and the television's on, there's music in the background, and there are people there just, just hugging on you. I just remember, and I, I remember it just, it's always felt so good coming to Granny's house. This aroma, this southern put food aroma coming from the kitchen area. Pinto beans, ground beef, smothered pork chops, liver, dark gravy, black eyed peas, candy yams. Oh Are you hungry yet? <laughs> My granny always had food. And that's what I loved about going to Granny's house. It was so magical for me. So growing up, knowing that going to 1415 Osage Drive, my home, our home, as Thomas is, it was always love there for you. As the story is told, my grandmother grew up motherless. I, I hear all these stories uh, growing up and I would I would take in a lot of them and as a young child I didn't always understand but as I got older and I would hear them over and over it did resonate in me and I understood it my mother wasn't taught how to be a mother 
her mother passed away, as actually she passed away, giving her last breath, to my understanding, to Granny's last, the youngest daughter. But I thought about that lately, more than I ever have before, and I said, you know what? God, her legacy. Had it not been for my grandmother's mother and her not giving birth to her, my mother and her siblings would not have made it through. I would not be here. Neither of us would be here. In the last few days of my grandmother's time in hospice, I came home. I wanted to watch my grandmother in her transition, I wanted that because I realized that she has watched me grow since I was a baby. So it was so important for me to be there. I sleep with her the very last night. Every time I got to her room, I would I would, I would play gospel music for her. And I was hoping she would hear it. She knew I was there. I would lean over and I would kiss her throughout the time of me being there. And I would, I would recite all the family members. Because I wanted her to hear all the names. And I told her over and over, and said, Winnie, we love you so much. We were so proud of you. You're resting well. That's what I would say to her. They tell you you don't know what they're thinking, but I was like, God, I hope that she hears my voice. I'm not sad, I'm happy. I am, my grandmother was hurting. I understand that uh, just, she passed away on that Wednesday morning, the last day of August, August 31st, and about actually 19 days prior. She celebrated her 82nd birthday. She was with family. The thing I loved about my granny is that whether I was with her physically or whether I just felt her presence, that again is why I'm not sad. I, I know she's with us. My granny seems to always have this spiritual strength about her that I admire so much. She, she seemed to always be in tune with God that when it's outside and it's thunder and I just knew that my granny knew when the storm would cease. I admired that spirit that lived in her. That's why I always loved being told that I'm just like my grandmother. <laughs> as we sleep peacefully at 1415 Osage Drive, and I know all of us probably feel this way, to have a mother of all mothers watching over you and praying for you, that was home. That was home to me, that was love. Dear Granny, I thank you I thank you for your incredible ways of displaying the purpose of a grandmother. I never knew what it would be like to not have you because you were always there. Dear Granny, I thank you. I thank you for teaching me how to pray, how to listen to the voice of God, and most importantly, for warning me that it is good to yield to the Holy Spirit, especially during a time of worship. Dear Granny, thank you. Thank you for kneeling with me on the side of the bed and leading me to the Our Father prayer. I learned that with my grandmother. 
She would actually start it off with something simple. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I shall die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Granny, you truly are the essence of a virtuous woman. Your presence is missed, but your legacy as a great mother will always be remembered, will never be forgotten. You were there for me as I grew into my life. And I know and I hope that you knew that I was right there with you as you slowly slipped away into afterlife. I will always carry your legacy proudly all the days of my life forevermore. My granny will always say, I love you to pieces. And there is nothing you can do about it. So long, granny, until we meet again. Thank you. Celebrate the life. wanted to teach us the things that she was never able to glean from her own mother and she taught us a great deal and I just want to share a few of those lessons and memories number one granny taught us to share she always shared her ice cream and we always knew it was in the deep freezer we'd come in that house looking for the ice cream my parents would be like don't go in that house I ask for ice cream and granny would be like that's why I buy that ice cream it's for them children y'all can eat whatever y'all want to eat in this house um, Granny taught us book smarts and practical smarts. When I was in elementary school, Granny was quizzing me on the multiplication facts. She knew them better than I did. Um, she could do the sums in her head, and she told us when I was in Texas, they didn't let us write stuff down. We had to do it in our head. Um, she taught us how to pick eggs. All of us go to the store the same way, open up that cart, and make sure all the eggs are intact, because Granny taught us that. Granny had the wherewithal when she was working at VIP. She had two black baskets for the clothes, one for the regular clothes and one for the clothes from VIP. Because she warned us, the clothes will cut you, and I took them for serious. Um, Granny also taught us to support each other. When I was little, I wanted to have earrings or pierced ears like all the other little girls. And my daddy said no. But Granny kept me in ear bobs, and every time I left Vivian, I had my fingernails painted, because every little girl ought to have her nails painted, according to Granny. Um, granny and Papa gave us, they passed out dollar bills every time you got an A on your report card. So who knows what kind of a student I might have become without that incentive. <laughs> she also supported me when I was little, I always got nosebleeds for no apparent reason. So Granny took a penny, she drilled a hole in it, and tied it around my neck. <laughs> and I wore that penny till the string broke. <laughs> maybe I grew out of it, maybe it was the copper in the penny, but the nosebleed stopped. Um, I had asthma when I was little, and uh, Granny tried to give me a chihuahua, but that didn't go over. Um, granny also taught us all self-discipline. If you ever were at 1415 Osage Drive and you made up a bed, Granny had them beds on the corner at the bottom crisp, like she had been through boot camp. <laughs> and she wanted you to make the bed up the same way. Same way. Yep. And um, me, Shar, and Brand moved at um, Granny's house, and she'd be telling us, y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. Roger and Cedric make up a bed better than y'all, and they boys. <laughs> and I remember thinking in my head, well, Roger and Cedric older than us, they ought to be able to make the bed up better than us. <laughs> but I had sense and home training enough not to say that out loud. <laughs> Granny also taught us the way to get things done. When we had to clean up on Saturday mornings, we had the music going, we were listening to the swap shot, shop and listening to Don't Mess With My Tutu. Um, she just had a way to make it encouraging so we could get it done. Whether your job was to change the trash cans in a little trash or to help her put stuff out on the line, she wanted you to do it well and do it right the first time so you could get done and go outside and play, sit on the porch, watch Soul Train or whatever it was you wanted to do that Saturday. Um, lastly, Granny taught us to be self-sufficient. 
Granny could make a door stop out of anything. Yeah, I'm talking true. whether it was that's an intricately true. folded magazine, an old that's school true. metal iron, a rock, a statue. She could do anything to keep the doors open at 1415. Um, when Shari and I were little, sometimes when there were a lot of people at the house, we would have to sleep in the back room that used to be on Troy's room. But that also happens to be the room that was farthest away from Granny and Papa's. So we would be back there, Granny would have tucked us in tight, you know, with all the covers pulled tight, and the big vapor rub on you. She could tell you, night, night. And we were like, well, we're scared to sleep back here. So our Granny told us what you need to do is you ball your fist up really tight, and then you put them under the pillow. And if somebody comes to get you, then you'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we did. <laughs> and lastly, Granny taught, taught me how to, taught all of us how to deal with bullies. When I was little, I was a little chubby. And she told me, if somebody says you're chubby, you tell them I may be, but I can diet it. And you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> I remember that, man. Yeah, yeah. she was quick. <laughs> Ultimately, um, Granny's life has taught us all to be strong. And I know that the God who strengthened oh, Granny, a woman who was raised without a mother, but managed to mother seven children of her own yes. and influence the lives of countless other Come folks. Come on. I know that this God will continue to strengthen us because our temporary loss is certainly God's eternal gain. Mm. Come on. I'm Davidson, and I am the daughter of Ruby Webb. And I probably should have prepared a little bit better and wrote this down, but I felt the need to just speak from my heart. Um, I have a lot of memories of my grandmother as a child, but the one thing that sticks out to me, because like Rosalind said, we were always together. <laughs> and so <laughs> we had a lot of things going on as grandchildren. And me being the youngest, I kind of got put up to a lot of things. <laughs> At any rate, um, I remember a situation where I was told that there was going to be a party. And it was late in the morning. And I got up, I put socks on, and people were laughing at me. And by people, I mean my cousins, and I love them so much. <laughs> I remember Granny coming and telling me to get back in the bed because there's no party going on at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I remember the next day I I and Granny pulling me to the side. And it's almost like I didn't really remember even then, but as the, day, the weeks have gone by, I've remembered that she spoke words of encouragement to me that you're, you're not always gonna be the little one. But I remember her also giving me influence as well. And as I got older and matured and went through things, I kind of strayed away from my grandmother. But as I strayed away and went through the things that I went through, I started to come back to her towards the end, and I'm so grateful for that because there was a moment in time a few years ago when I lost my father. And there was some time where he and I didn't speak, but we were able to get back on a court towards the end. So I value that, that in the end, when I was able to actually be able to reach out to my grandmother and be there for her, as much as I knew to be, we had conversations that I will never forget about things that I never thought she would talk to me about because I was always the youngest. Well, obviously there are more children that have been involved and added to our family. So I'm not the youngest anymore, but in the back of my mind, I always remember being the youngest. And with that being said, the things that we talked about and the things that she instilled in me, I will never forget that and I will always take those memories with me because she was a very strong woman. She went through a lot, and I remember one of the conversations that we had towards the end was that she was tired. And although I'm not very old, I would assume that when you're tired, you're tired. 
And there's nothing that anybody can do about that. And as much as she would have maybe tried to tell us about things and us caring about her, because this is real. Flesh is a serious thing because unfortunately, a lot of times people feel that they have to Im impose their feelings on you because they love you. But at the end of the day, that's her road to hope. Yeah, yeah. And I accepted what she told me, that she was tired. And as much as I know everybody wanted her to do something different, in that last conversation that I had with her, all I remember her saying is, Brandy, I know what you're telling me is right. And I know that y'all love me, but I'm tired. So I gained strength in that. And after that, I didn't question her anymore. I didn't say anything else about it because she had came to grips with what she needed to do because she was a woman of God. And because of that, I didn't have a fear in my heart about where she was going. I didn't have a fear that she was gonna be in pain anymore because I knew. With my father, we had time. We didn't think we had time. But the time that we got, I, I tried to make the best of it towards the end. And I tried to do the same with my grandmother. Amen. So with that being said, although I was the youngest and I'm not the youngest anymore, I want to say goodbye to my grandmother and know that she led the life that she was meant to lead. And with that, she gave me a great gift that I will never, ever discard or forget. She also told me, don't accept no wooden nickels. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely will not. <laughs> Thank you. Sing it. And uh, my grandmother shared uh, 
in his bones as she was telling me how he struggled with what God was telling him to do. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about. Right? And uh, he had a stuttering problem, so speak, speaking problem himself. And, uh, and I don't know if you know, sometimes God asks us to do things and we may not be comfortable. And that's one of the things, I, one of the many things Brandy, Brandy taught me. It's just follow him and just have faith even when you're not comfortable. You know, just do it anyway, baby. And, and, and watch what happens. And because of a lot of things that she taught me, I've been able and I've been blessed to see some things in my life that uh, I've been able to see God move in my life. <laughs> and I don't know if I would have been able to experience without some of the things that she taught me. And, um, I truly feel like the life that I live, and uh, although it has ups and downs, but the family that I, that I have now is a result of what my grandmother taught me and, and how I'm raising my boys. Uh, I find myself saying things to them and, and my baby girl, and I stop and go, man, that was grandma speaking. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy, you don't realize that the impact that, that she has. And uh, though she's many hours away, she's still there. And, uh, and I know that'll continue. Um, so the song, um, the song that I'm about to sing, uh, I chose this because I want to give, uh, I don't want to change the focus, but I want to uh, honor Christ, honor Jesus, because of what he did and what he's allowed us to experience if we just believe in him. And that's something my grandmother did. She, she encouraged us to go to church. And we decided sometimes we'll, we'll go, well, I'll speak for myself. I would go to church. And uh, so I thought, OK, I'll just go. That'd be, that'd be fine. But then I started realizing my grandmother was going to ask me questions. And uh, whether she knows or not, that's what made me start paying more attention. And I thank God that I did. I thank her. For, for raising me that way, and, and, uh, and I'm slowly and surely I began to listen. And uh, it began to sink in, and, uh, and that word changed my life. Uh, so, uh, not taking the focus off of Grandma, uh, just going to put a little focus on Jesus right now, and, uh, and just tell him thank you. For receiving my grandmother, and I, 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 I feel it in my spirit. She's no longer in pain. She's not. And uh, as this song suggests, uh, you know, we serve a God that, that heals, and, and she's, she's her strength now has been renewed, and she's healed. Sometimes our healing doesn't come while we walk in the world, but our healing comes after this body has passed. And that's what Christ tells us, though this body perishes, I've gone to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I would not have said it. And, and I just want to thank him and just take a moment to thank him and at the same time. Jesus, the most beautiful name of all names Jesus the only name that brings healing and strength oh, oh, oh. see when I speak your name mountains move Chains are loose. See when I speak your name, darkness flees. It has no hold on me. Jesus, the most beautiful name that I know. You're the exalted one, Jesus. You have the power alone. 
I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. And I have kept the faith. Amen. And just for a few minutes, I want to talk about now I am ready. Amen. The reason I chose that subject is because every time I talk with her, that's what she'll tell me. Baby, I'm ready. I say, Mama, God is not going to come get you until it's time. She said, I know you're telling me the truth. She said, but I'm just ready to go. <laughs> and she said, I'm not afraid of that. Amen. Amen. So uh, as I visit with her and talk with her, and one thing about it, you couldn't just tell her anything mm -mm. and think you, that, that, that wasn't going to go over with her because it was not going to go over with her. But she told me the last visit I had with her, and we talked for about an hour and a half. And she told me, she said, baby, she said, I thank you. And I thank, called my wife, said, me and you got the same nickname. She said, and I thank you. She said, y'all been here for me. And she said, everything that you done told me. She said, I know y'all didn't lie to me. Amen. She said, but mother is ready to go. That was the word, last word she told me. Mother is ready to go. Amen. So, uh. Just for a few minutes, we're going to try to talk about, now nah, I am ready. Right. See, before you can say I'm ready, All right. some things have to come to pass. Right. Am I right about it? Right. Amen. Now, we're here for a celebration now. I, I, I like for people to talk back to them. Amen. 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 See, first of all, I used to hear my granddaddy say, you got to get your house. In order. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. And once you get your house in order, yeah. then you are prepared yeah. to meet your day. Right. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But before you can do that, you got to first accept him. Yeah. Not as just Savior, right. but as Lord and Savior. Yeah. See, a lot of times our problem, we want God to save us, but we don't want him to tell us what we can and can't do. Right. Am I right about it? Right. Amen, amen. He got to be Lord and Savior. Yeah. Amen. When Paul, he penned these words uh -huh. to his son Timothy. Yeah. Paul had been on his first, second, and third missionary journey. All right. Paul had preached this gospel, had taught the lives of many people. Matter of fact, the young man that he penned these words to here today, Timothy, is one of his sons in the ministry. One that he, he came in contact with on his first journey. And he took him under his wings, amen, and trained him, amen, and then Turn him loose. Oh, yeah. Amen. And let him know you got a great task yeah, yeah, yeah. that is before you. Yeah, yeah. But if you look over in chapter 3, you'll find out he was telling him about fearless time. Yeah, yeah. 
will surely come in the latter days. My brothers and sisters, we're in our latter days right now. Amen. Whether we want to accept it or not, we're in our latter days. Amen. Because of the fact that we're living in a time when men are calling right wrong and wrong right. Is y'all going to pray with me? Amen. Amen. But Paul was sitting in a seven by seven. He was in a dungeon. And he decided to pin these words to his son Timothy. Because every now and then, Timothy will get a little weary. And he will try to do something to encourage him. Amen. And that's when he told him, amen, for now I am ready. He said, but first before you come to see by me, I need you to do so. I need you to go by my house. He said, look at my closet. Bring me a coat. Look on my desk and bring my book. He said, come quickly before the fall of the year. Because the sea will begin to rage. Amen, amen. I need you to come. He said, I got to look with me right now. He said, every now and then he'll give me something for the pain. Mama was in pain. Amen. But she told me, she said, son, I'm tired of being sick. Going to treat me. And being sick when I come back. She said, mother's just tired. And Tim, Paul was tired. He was looking at Nero's chopping block. Amen. And he said, I need you to come soon. Come quickly. Amen. Don't, don't, don't hesitate. Just come on and get me. And I thought about that because mama was saying, I just want the Lord to come on. Just come on and get me. Am I right about it? Amen. Whether you believe it or not, but that shall use you. Because she had everything in order. Amen. Everything that she needed to get us from this side to the other side. I tell people all the time, death. Uh -huh. It's not a saint enemy. Right. Death is my limousine. Right. They're going to take me from this side yeah. to the other side. Yeah. But I got a special show. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me Amen, amen. Long as he driving, everything yeah. going to be all right. Yeah. Y'all know he's in control. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. I thank God. Yeah. That when God took him to yeah. and took a look at this dust yeah. that he made clay, uh -huh. shaped it and molded into a man, yeah. breathed the breath of life into it, yeah. it became a living yeah. soul. Yeah. I thank God yeah, Lord. that he paid special attention yeah. to that clay. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. When the clay got in trouble, yeah. amen, amen, I can see my dad. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Amen. And I'm going to leave you alone. He walked his way down to 39 problems. 42 generations. Am I right about it? Trapped off in a little town called Bethlehem. One cold December night. Born in a state. Wrapped up in dead men's clothes. Laid in a cow truck. Reared up in Nazareth. That let you know you got to go through some stuff. Baptized in the church. Went around doing good. Healing sick folks. Raised in dead folks. Opening blinded eyes. Cut a loose stumbling tongue. Unstopping deaf ears. But I thank God. One Friday morning. Picked up his cross. And put it on his shoulder. When marching. A calf is here. Am I right about it? The Lord got hit. He fell to his knee. Dr. Watts took his pen and paper out. Wrote the hymn of the church. Said, must Jesus bear the cross along? And all the world Somebody say, no, no, no. There's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Oh, consecrate it. Cross our back. To death just set me free. Yeah. She free y'all. Yeah. Am I right about it? I'm so glad that he died. 
Didn't he do it? Yeah. When he took the hearts of the earth, did a 72 hour revival. Yeah. But early, yeah. somebody ought to help me now. Early, yeah. think I'll help me one more time. Early, yeah. that Thursday yeah. morning, got up yeah. with all power yeah. of yeah. heaven and earth. Mm. Am I right about it? Yeah. Oh, we mm. can say good night, y'all. Yeah. But in the morning, yeah. I'll see you. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. There's something strange about it in the morning. Yeah. Oh, David took a stroke yeah. on his back in the one morning. Uh -huh. Saw a dove yeah. exercise his yeah. way. Lord have mercy. God, yeah. He said, but if I had wings yeah. at the morning, dove, yeah. I should fly away.